Games have always been a place for players to enjoy their free time, make friends, and even look for comfort. And that has never been more true than in the year 2020. Regardless of the reasons, it's a fact that more people are playing video games more than ever. And the coronavirus pandemic has been a huge part of that. This is now officially a pandemic. The World Health Organization confirmed today. Like many other facets of entertainment right now, the video game industry is experiencing some boom, some pretty major sales numbers, but there have been some challenges to face as well. Excuse me, is this the line to get tested? No, sir. We're in line for the movies. Nothing like sitting in a tiny box with a bunch of strangers while we huff for circulated air. Hi, Pro Guys family. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be discussing and talking about how the video game industry has been affected by the global pandemic. The Washington Post reported that this spring that there was a total of 1.49 billion hours of gaming content viewed in April, a 50% increase from the numbers in March. For a scale, that's over 170,000 years of gaming content viewed in the course of a month. In an ironic twist of fate, the first recorded cases of the human wearing clothes were roughly 170,000 years ago. Maybe I know that because more people are wearing fewer clothes than ever while stuck at home in quarantine. With the newfound downtime that the pandemic has allowed, combined with the financial strain that it puts on consumers, many more people are turning to streamers as a way to consume their favorite gaming content for free. The growing popularity of streaming could also be showing how much people just want to have a normal social interaction again. Twitch streamers often build communities around their channels, complete with Discord servers where players can hang out and play games together themselves. Those communities are pulling together even closer, as well as continuing to grow amidst the pandemic. Of course, the actual sales of games are up dramatically. It makes sense, games are the perfect distraction. Any player knows that time always seems to be going a little bit too fast, regardless of what game you're playing. Plus, nothing relieves more stress like a good round of Call of Duty. Though, sometimes that could make you a little bit more stressed out, especially when it comes to League of Legends. Although, some people do prefer something a little bit more quaint from their gaming experience. Something like, say, a cozy community simulator with adorable animal friends. That's right, it's Animal Crossing. The series has always been and will always be the ultimate de-stressor, and its power to make us stop and smell the flowers was on full display at the start of the pandemic. Back in March, just as the first waves of lockdowns were happening, Nintendo made history with the record-breaking sales for Animal Crossing New Horizons. In its first six weeks of release, the game has sold over 13 million copies, which means it sold more in that period than any other Animal Crossing game in their entire lifetime. It even sold more units than its endlessly popular counterparts from the Mario and Zelda series, which is a pretty big deal considering no other games have even come close on the Switch. According to Business Insider, a large portion of players for the game are also brand new buyers of the Nintendo Switch. This means that New Horizons brought in thousands of new gamers, and also helped Nintendo's newest console one of the best-selling pieces of gaming hardware of all time, even beating the PS4 and the Xbox One. This is the true power of Animal Crossing, and we not only welcome it, but embrace it wholeheartedly. <laughs> The newest entry in the AC series was already highly anticipated, but the fact that its release also happened to coincide with the start of quarantine meant that people more than ever are playing the lovable community simulator. People seemed to want any kind of pick-me-up that they could find, and Animal Crossing could offer just that, which meant the game was flying off the shelves. Not coincidentally, at the same time, people were also struggling to find any vendor that had a Nintendo Switch in stock. Between the newfound players who came searching in and the bots that can purchase the console the second it releases, people either file themselves switchless or having to pay an insane amount of money for something that is obviously recently priced from a third-party software or a company like eBay. And don't even get us started about the limited edition New Horizons themed Switch that's dropped alongside the game's release. The shortages for in-demand consoles aren't unique to the past spring either. Now that the next-gen console has dropped with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, players are frustrated all over again as they sold out instantly. Companies like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo will be raking in the cash this holiday season, but unfortunately, so are the resellers. A sudden emergence of a video game console black market is also quite disappointing, but also entirely on brand for 2020. But it's not just the happy-go-lucky games that are doing well. Rather, all game sales are skyrocketing in all genres. The aforementioned Washington Post article also states that Microsoft reported over 10 million players that were subscribed to the Game Pass in April, and that there was a 130% surge in multiplayer engagements from March 
to April. With the end of the pandemic nowhere in sight as of late, we can't imagine those players' counts have dipped at all. If anything, they've probably grown. Of course, not all of the effects on the coronavirus pandemic on the game industry has been beneficial to the sales and the growth of games. Just as with all other media, production delays were inevitable. Most recently, CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077, which is also one of the most highly anticipated titles of the year, got hit with another delay, and responses from gamers have ranged from sympathetic to simply outraged. It was not the first delay to be caused by the coronavirus, and it certainly won't be the last. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in that city. Corps got their grubby claws and everything. Studios from all over the world are feeling the pressure, with every aspect of game production finding workabouts just to stay safe during the pandemic. This goes from development teams themselves to the voice actors to the manufacturers and distributors of the physical game copies. Right now, it's hard to say how these new protocols will affect development in the long term, but if a studio has to take a few more months to make sure that their product is up to snuff, both in terms of quality and how safe the workers are while it's being made, that is all right with us. The good news is that game studios are better equipped than any other media companies when it comes to finding solutions. Unlike the film or television productions, games don't require the team to congregate in person on a large scale, because almost everything can be done online. Indie studios in particular have already had developers who worked remotely, and large companies have had plenty of resources to build a work-from-home infrastructure for their employees. Developers like Blizzard and Riot have already announced that they're working from home until summer of 2021 at least, and plenty of indie studios are deciding to do away with their office space altogether rather than pay rent for spaces that they're not even using in most part of the expensive cities in the world. It's likely that plenty of studios will go back to working in person after the pandemic is over, but it's also very likely that the coronavirus has forever changed the landscape of how games are made just as it will change how other industries operate as well. Speaking of other industries, events is one of them, and games have plenty of events and conventions for both the game developers and fans alike. The cancellation of large-scale community events like PSX and BlizzCon has been heartbreaking for those who look forward to attending each year. Internally, developers are taking a hit by not being able to attend important networking events like Game Developers Conference in San Francisco every spring. On the marketing side, studios are not getting the opportunities to show off their work to the masses at conventions like E3 and PAX. The cancellation of consumer-facing events is also interesting when you consider that some of those events were struggling to stay afloat anyway, and the pandemic is the final push to not have them at all anymore. If these events aren't outright cancelled, many of them have been moved online. While most people are really going to be missed being able to attend the conventions in person, it does make the convention experience more accessible to those who wouldn't have otherwise been able to go. In-person cons will be back before we know it, but maybe it's worth considering how we can maintain these newfound avenues of accessibility for the future. In the same vein, esports have also had to pivot to accommodate the work-from-home model. Rather than filling the arenas around the world, the pro teams have moved online along with everyone else. While other sports have been struggling to make it all work in the field, gamers have turned around in a poetic, full-circle moment and went back to doing what they always did, playing games alone in the comfort of their own homes. The last stand for Santorin against his old team, Turtle the same, but Doublelift has always been the better AD carry, shows it here in the game as the Nexus falls, TSM claim LCS title number 7. But what is it about games in particular that made them so popular throughout quarantine? Not just amongst pro League of Legends players, but for us all. Perhaps it's something that makes us feel somewhat productive, especially for those who have more free time than they used to. Having a game to practice together and get better at with your friends is something to focus on and something to work towards and having that direction, whatever it looks like, is important to a lot of people. If nothing else though, we can't deny that gaming during the pandemic means something different than it did before on an interpersonal level. Games were already important to some of us. Many people use games as a way to keep up with their friends, but now it seems like the social lifeline that we can't help but to hold on to. What was once a supplemental part of our relationships has become the entirety of it. While we miss being able to see those who are close to us, games have always been an important part of helping us feel somewhat normal. The success of games like Among Us seems to point to this. The cooperative social deduction game has been out since 2018, but didn't reach its mainstream popularity until this year. Mafia games have always been pretty popular, and having one that you can play online was just a surefire way to make it a success. Just like Animal Crossing, it seemed to be the right place, right time kind of scenario. Oh my god. Oh, Corpse just died. No. Corpse died? I run. Listen, you don't have to do this. I have a child. You do have two children. <laughs> I have a ch two child. I forgot about it. Hey, listen, I'll just stay here. 
and you just walk away. See, Among Us is not just a goofy mafia game in space. It's a game that pulls from personal relationships because you have to use your knowledge on how your friends operate in order to win. Online multiplayer games have always been some of the most popular in the market, and increasingly so in recent years. But now they've become incredibly relevant in helping us keep connected to those around us. The game industry has been through a lot of changes over the course of the pandemic, but one of the things that has remained the same is its dedication to giving us fun, engaging experiences that has helped us relax, find a community, and get us lost in another world if we need it. The world of video games will look certainly different after all of this is over, between development, events, and even how the games are played. But that world has a lot of potential to even be brighter in the future, for players and developers alike. So, what have been some of your favorite games during the pandemic? Have you lost some friends over Among Us, and were you able to pick up the PS5 or Xbox Series X on release day? And how's that Animal Crossing island coming along? Let us know in the comments down below. We look forward to seeing those comments and seeing your replies. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.